Hello everyone, welcome back to the next edition of The Only Networking Show, news, education and discussion from the world of networking from Only. I'm James West. And I'm Kelly West. We're the co-founders of Only Networking, the business network for people who like people. Very busy show today, Kelly. We've got lots to talk about. We're going to talk about building relationships at networking, particularly online. We're going to talk about in your networking gem, how to help people, um, which is very important. We've also got a, a special guest, James Gale. Shogun Social, <laughs> that'll be you. Yeah. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much for having me. I Thanks appreciate it. Thanks for coming it. on the show. We will be bringing you into the conversation later. We've got our spotlight interview. So before we get on to that, we're going to start with some news. Kelly, over to you for some only news. Thank you, James. So only New York. We've been talking about this for a few months. It is going extremely well. A wonderful vibe, brilliant culture of people, bring uh, relationships It's working, isn't it? It's brilliant to yeah. see. Brilliant yeah, to see. Very much so. Really good fun. Really good fun. So welcome to all you new, me- new members to that group. But what's next? Only Manchester is next. So Manchester, famed for its community spirit, and it's seeing a resurgence at the moment. So we're really excited to be launching that. And not just because Callum Nicholson is going to be co-host with James. So we do expect energy levels to be high for that group. So that's what's coming. Absolutely. Thank you, Kelly. Very exciting. Manchester's hot. And it's part of this... Um, plan for us New York was always a bit of a test idea can it work can we network across the Atlantic but the bigger plan was always to unite the UK so we're as far north as time and we're Manchester's a kind of keystone place for us so very excited about that um so we're going to start off we're going to talk about building relationships particularly building relationships online it's different, isn't it? Mm. It definitely is different. Yeah. Um, I've written down some of the wisdom yeah. from the only members. Um, this was off the back of our education last month. I shouldn't say last month. Whenever we did it <laughs> in our timeline. Um, Yvonne Garano, we talked about um, building relationships. But here's some of the wisdom that came off of the back of that. Ainsley Chivers, a.k.a. the print lady. Probably your first mention on the show. Um This is a great point. She said, we forget to listen to the language that people use. Mm. Mm. And this, for me, opens up the question because the thing we hear quite often at online networking, people go, oh, yeah, but you don't get the body language. True. Discuss. What are we missing? I don't necessarily agree with that. Well, yeah. I think you can gauge body language. You can still see what somebody's doing. So why can't you pick up on that body language? You can. I can certainly tell if somebody's awkward or energetic or mm. bored. It's quite easy, I would suggest, to see that. It's listening, it's observing, isn't it? I mean, have you had any sort of data? Have you observed this? Not really. I haven't had many problems doing online networking and building relationships, but I think something that can help if you want to be perceived in a certain way, something can help beforehand, is to put out content of yourself in a certain way already, whether it be a TikTok format or a podcast or anything, so people can see your general mannerisms, mm-hmm. how you work, if you paint pictures with your hands like I tend to do. You know, it's stuff like that that can help a preconception when someone comes to meet you and especially can warm up a, a, a lead because then if you know, you're talking to someone, they've seen your content before, they feel like they've known you. It's called parasocial bond. It's an existing thing. So it's quite interesting. We're going to talk about that quite a lot today mm. because this whole thing about stitching together networking with what you can do online, mm. we're going to talk about depth of relationships. But yes, very yeah. good point, James. Um, Robert Brown, the Mac master himself, he made a brilliant point. He said, when it comes to building relationships, it's got to be a two-way thing. Mm. I think there's this idea that I've got to build a relationship with everyone that I meet. Why? Mm. And it's a great point mm. from Robert, isn't it? What What is the relationship that's appropriate for that particular interaction? Because yeah. they might not want a relationship. They just might want a transaction. So yeah. I thought that was a fantastic point, Robert. Yeah. Um, well said. I've got two comments from two other members which are connected. Tracy Shrimpton, she said... It's easy to build relationships at a superficial level, Mm. but building trust is key. So that's step one. Sam Cush said, I will read this out verbatim, um, it used to be hard to get time with people. So he's talking about in-person networking and kind Mm. of the old Mm. way of doing it. Used to be hard to get time with people, but once you got into the conversation, easier to build deeper connections. He said it's now the other way round. Mm. Getting time in front of people is dead easy. The abundance of online networking, LinkedIn, I can go on and I can meet and talk to hundreds of people in a day if I'm Mm -hmm. so inclined. The time bit's easy. The depth of connection is harder. Yeah. All I would 
sort of um, consider there is is it harder or does it mean you just have to put in more effort with that bit you will have a tape on this I'd imagine yeah of course definitely he makes a really good point actually we talked about this before didn't we this is a bit like the equivalent of going into a room and just scatter gun in your business cards you can have 20 one-to-ones in a day if you want to Mm. But do you choose to push that on any further? That's kind of my equivalent now of passing out the business cards. I'll have a Zoom with most people I meet just to see if I like them, which I wouldn't have done before Yeah, because we're in a different environment. But you don't have to build next level with everyone, do you? No. But you do, I think, with the way we've evolved now, we have to have that initial conversation in order to know whether we want to put it any further. Yeah. and it, But it's the depth, isn't it? And this is what you're talking about. Mm. That The depth, where did that used to come from? It was the two hour one-to-one over coffee it was yeah. the bit when you sat next to someone at a networking event that you didn't really think you had a connection with mm. and then it turns out oh I actually really like this person yeah uh, for me it's the online piece that you can use to stitch that together mm. what's your take on that yeah as i said before it's creating a backlog of things you want to be known for and getting your personality out there but also when it comes to the whole one-to-ones thing um you have to kind of pick who you want to have those longer conversations with more strategically now because mm. people are more open to meeting um and you have to give away way more than you think you should i think there's there's still plenty of businesses out there who think they still hold some kind of industry secret that they're holding back and they do not want people to know throw that out the window and give everything up front for free because you like, it's not like someone can run away and steal your business idea mm. straight away. Mm. I will tell everyone everything I know on social, the exact way we do our whole internal process on videos every single day. Is anyone stolen it? Run away with it? No, because <laughs> bloody hard work. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, it's just helping people as much as you can up front. And if you do that in the first ten minutes, and you can, I like seeing people's eyes when they realise the potential their business has on a certain platform, where at least for me, because I'm in a service-based industry, I can help someone more actively. Yeah. So if you do have that ability, just jump in and give that person the advice they need. And it can tend to be that simple, to be honest, because then we're like, oh my God, can I have your business card? Instead of here, take my card. Yeah. It should always be a, can I have, instead of, can you take? Very good point. I can remember us both having a one-to-one with James coming off and going, oh, wow. And it's almost that we always pride ourselves with feeling people get in an only meeting. But it's a similar thing when you have a yeah. one-to-one, isn't it? And it's really good. And you're right. You gave so much value. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, we could do this. We haven't thought about that. It just gives yeah. you a bit of energize yeah. for your energy for your business, doesn't it? Yeah. But yeah. G- brilliant point by Sam. You know, the depth, you've got to work at it. Because I think a lot of people are now thinking, well, I've been, I went to a 90-minute networking event once a month. And nothing happened either side of it. Well, okay, but you've saved at least double that time in terms of travel alone, Mm -hmm. let alone all the other Mm -hmm. paraphernalia. Are you putting in the time to stitch together and deepen the right relationships in between? And if you're not, that's probably where you're going wrong with networking. So um, final comment. Jenny Erickson over in Norway, Mm -hmm. good old Jenny, she said, "Um, active listening is crucial, arguably more so when meeting people online. She said, but the foundations of networking and building the relationships are the same. She said it's about listening, having those one-to-ones and finding out how you can help your network. Mm -hmm. So fundamentally, it hasn't changed that much. So I thought that was a fantastic um, final point to finish on. We also focused this month on the power of personality profiling. This was what Yvonne brought to the um, show. But there's other approaches. You talked about Chris Voss, didn't Mm. you? And the whole sort of NLP. If you don't know Chris Voss, chief FBI negotiator, wrote Never Split the Difference. Um, You learned a lot about relationships on that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I think you can read into it two ways. It's manipulation. So you can manipulate a conversation and that's that's probably a bit cynical you wouldn't necessarily want to go down that route but it's about mirroring uh when somebody's talking to you and you Mm. mirror the way they're talking etc etc picking up on certain things they're saying relaying certain bits of information to show that you've listened there's lots and lots of things and if you haven't heard of chris voss then definitely look him up but i think until you're aware of who you're talking to what floats their boat and how you need to communicate with them plus how you can use those different tools in order to further a conversation and a relationship. It, there's there's lots to add to it. We, we were on a meeting the other day and one of the visitors said, if you can't be authentic and you can't be yourself, and then I'm just out, I'm not bothered. And I get that. I do get that. But when you're a business mm. owner and you're 
one person in thousands in your industry, you do have to pull out all the stops and you do have to look at how you can build these stronger, better relationships. So you yeah. do need to be more aware of your clients. Well, that was really the main takeaway from that education is that given that relationships are important or good relationship building is central to so many aspects of business. Networking is the obvious one. Social media is increasingly about interaction. Um, so you've got that's about relationship building. Mm. Selling is about relationships. Um, employing people, et cetera, et cetera. How many of us as business owners spend time prioritizing learning how to get better at building relationships? And the answer is, sadly, very little, mm. especially when we think about in comparison to other activities like social media, which, as you'll know, very easy to waste a lot of time on social media if you're not strategic about it, isn't okay. it? Yeah, it's a time sink. And it is a full-time job, if not a multi-team job in itself, especially mm -hmm. in its form it is now. So you have to find your method of communication that suits you best because social communication doesn't come naturally to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, being in, being on video for me is my ideal because I hate the written word. Like, I don't, it takes me way too long to write and I'm dyslexic as all heck, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. And graphic design isn't my forte either. So I have to rely on my communication skills verbally and painting a picture with what I can tell people. And I find that some things, you need, you need to get in a good flow. So podcasting, again, the conversation between two people, you get a much better flow, so you'll be more natural. Best way to start if you're jumping in a video for the first time, uh, especially video podcast, ideally, or vodcast, as it's now emerging as a particular term. Um, or doing things like, I record the best parts of my meeting. So I'll stick a camera on me, I'll record my audio separately, and I'll catch it when I have a good moment. You know when you're in that good flow and you're like, oh, sitting amazing there. <laughs> um, you actually finally have it captured and you can clip that as a soundbite. And now people can see what it's like to have a one-to-one -one with you. So we extend that. It's almost like you see a, 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 you know, an event you're gonna go to next year and you see what it was like last year. And, oh, I really wanna be a part of that. It's the same effect you can do on a micro level for yourself. Yeah. So yeah, again, it's extending those trust things, finding out how you communicate, and just trying different things over and over. Even as hey, let's get ready with work with f f with me, you know, one of those TikTok style things. Well, however you communicate, try lots of different things over and over again. Test, 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 and you'll get there. You'll find we, something. We need camera crews just following us around. <laughs> If somebody... Gary Vaynerchuk does that, doesn't yeah, he? Literally and... everything he does is is yeah. filmed, isn't it? And the GOAT agency. If anyone hasn't, hasn't heard of them, they're one of the biggest influence marketing agencies in the world. They invested very early doors on a, I think it's a daily or a weekly vo uh, blog. And now I know all the different characters inside their office. I know exactly what they're good at. And they just do that always. And they've invested hundreds of thousands in it. Mm. And it's paid off massively because they are the influence marketing agency. What are they called? The GOAT agency. So literally, Matt. You know, okay, one of them ones. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. There's a clip there, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, there go. We'll have a look at that and have a look at Gary Vaynerchuk. If you don't, yes. if anyone doesn't follow him, um, you'll learn a lot from Gary. Mm. He's a bit marmite, isn't he? Oh, he's, he's funny, though. He's yeah. funny. He means well. He, he said the same thing over the last 10 years, mainly because no one's still doing it yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you will get value out of it probably in the first month, and then you'll just hear the same thing over and over. But you will get an extreme, a, a good amount of perspective from it, as he likes to say. To do it right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, well, it's time. Next part of the show, Kelly's networking gem. Yeah. Over to you, That's Kelly. That's me. That'll be me. So, we talked about this. We've talked about this a lot, actually, while I particularly have with uh, particularly new members to only or people that are new to networking. How can you help others? I think this this has been an ongoing conversation, as I've just said. So, when you're looking to go into a network or you're part of a network, I think there's that sudden realization of I'm not helping anyone. How can I help anyone? It's I've typically, no I've got no money, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I've got no money to spend or I'm reluctant to spend money because I've yet to build the relationships and I need to, to know these people a little bit better. So I've been trying to talk to people about this. New to networking or being there a long time and it maybe just gets a little bit stale. Great that James is here because he'll back me up on this, hopefully. You can help people in very small ways. Mm. Liking, commenting, sharing mm. on their posts on social media. We've spent ages, like you just said, it's a full-time job. If you've created this post that you've put out and it falls flat, it is disheartening. We've mm. all been there. We've all done it. Mm. Right, I'm not saying that we're going to help people go to the moon with their posts, but if you're part of a networking group and you are constantly seeing posts, social media outputs from others in your group, just take the time to like it at least. Comment on it next level. Share it if you think it's amazing. If you're adding a comment, make sure it's relevant. If it's a po if it's a uh, blog, sorry, read the blog, comment on it, something that you liked about the blog in particular, so that you can just start that conversation. 
that is helping people in your network massively. Mm. Similarly, if people have got events on that they want to share, that's an easy one to share with people, particularly if it's something that's close to your heart. So I think the key message here is don't go into a network thinking, I've got to buy from that person, that person, that person, that, that. And that's great. If it's relevant to you, then of course do it. But just go back, simple steps, and just help people in terms of what can you do in order to further their stuff. It's a great tip. We try and come off of every one-to-one, every interaction. I've always asked people, what can I do to help you? Anything you need right now? Um, so, but between that, but the main point is listen to people. It, people really, yeah. it, it's such a scramble for attention. Yep. So many times in networking, you're speaking to someone that you it, their eyes are glazed over because they're just waiting to tell you about them. Mm. So if you want to do something for free to make people feel good and remember you, make them feel good by listening to them. And we talk about this as in banking credits, yes. the connections. So, you know, if you if you can put everything to one side, you can go into a one to one, be it 20 minutes, half an hour and just give that person half an hour of your time, uninterrupted, not looking at the clock, not checking my emails, that is huge to that person you're talking to because they know they've captured you, they might have questions to ask you, they might have other things they want to get off their chest. We've talked about this. Relationships mm. do go a little bit deeper nowadays. So just giving somebody your time is really invaluable. You don't have to be buying all the time. So we just wanted to highlight today that in order to help people look at their social media, ask them questions, ask them who would be a good connection, how you can help them. And it might be something simple, depending on what you do, you might be able to give them 10 minutes of advice that they would have had to have paid hundreds of pounds for mm. if they were going to pay for it outside of the network. So I think slowly steady, particularly if you're new to networking, just sit tight, get to know people, but then slowly and surely there's little bits you can do without spending money. And then when it is appropriate, of course, that's the next step. Fantastic. Thank you, Kelly. Another wonderful Kelly's Networking Gem. I kind of do this flourish because I picture Rob's little title thing going on. <laughs> there we go. So let's come on to the final part of the, um, I nearly said the meeting then, I was in networking mode. So the final part of the only show is our guest interview. Um, so we've got very lucky today. We've got James Gow. He's a very busy man. He's got two phones. He's already had to be trying to drag him out of here because there's stuff going on. Always. Shogun Digital. It's a cool name. No, it's Shogun Social. Now, yeah, isn't so the it? official name is Shogun Digital Limited. And then we traded Shogun Social just to put the social in there, make it a bit more specific. Uh, very recent change. And the website still says Shogun Digital. So it's very confusing. I'm working on it. Don't judge me. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I, I let myself off then. That's why I wasn't <laughs> sure. And I've written both. But anyway, I've got a little formal bio that I wrote with mm. my own hand, yeah. which I'm going to read out. James is leading the next generation of bold and ambitious business owners, helping businesses tackle one of their biggest challenges, social media marketing. Combining his advertising and agency background with a keen observational eye, James helps clients utilise the latest tech while recognising the importance of having a business focus at all times. Very important, that bit. Mm. He's also a fan of NBA basketball, so that is likely to comprise the majority of this interview. <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in there because we both like NBA. Um, Tell us about Shogun Social. What's the story? When did it come about? Mm. What's your mission? Uh, the story. I was a little lad. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, so uh, I was in advertising, you know, about three or four years before I started Shogun in the first place. And, you know, I worked with big brands like, you know, B- B&Q, HSBC, Samsung, EE, stuff like that. Um, and even with some smaller, medium-sized businesses as well, which was in the last agency I worked in. But no matter where I went or the size of business I worked with, there seemed to be this weird little gap that no one's really using social the way it's intended to be used. And I always found it really odd. Uh, so, you know, when I was in my last agency... What I, is that? What? How should it be used? Well, to post like creators, because you'll have the same board members that say social media is not worth our time. After they finish the meeting, they'll go and open their phone. Yeah, and they'll go and like something that someone's made for free. So they're consumers of content. They are consumers and then also denies that their business needs it. It is a constant paradox that we're in. Uh, but it's mainly because it's a massive investment... Um, that doesn't bring immediate ROI like it would in performance marketing. But it has massive dividends, I think, beyond performance marketing if you do it correctly. Um, But, you know, I I observed that constantly. So when Um, was this, roughly? Give us a timeline. This was, well, I'd say 
we, the business is only a year and seven months old. So it's, wow. yeah, so about a year and seven months ago, <laughs> um, I, I kind of looked at it and went, there's such a gap here for someone to just step in and really help with the organic content, mm -hmm. the stuff you post every day, the stuff in the trenches that matters to your audience, to your customers and everything else. Because before the pandemic, it used to be, you know, I'll post maybe once, twice, maybe three times a week if you're lucky. It'll just be about the business itself, completely unengaging, completely useless. It never did anything. So therefore, people just posted to keep up with the Joneses. That's yeah. it. it's just I'll keep it alive just to show the business is functioning. That was the only the only method of it. When there's so much more potential housed in how we can use organic social that it takes it takes people to the moon every single day. Normal everyday people that are outperforming companies tenfold mm. who have all the resources and the knowledge and the master's degrees and all the rest. And it's almost like we're almost failing to see what's in front of us. Just to post a bit more human. And over the pandemic specifically, there was this massive gap between companies and people especially now work from home culture and tiktok especially uh, kind of brought it in and went oh, i'm so sick of corporations i'm so sick of having to do things i'm working from home now on my own time i'm having to put up with this global pandemic anyway <clears throat> so why why should i why should i like this random piece of mm. crap that you're putting out mm. um why should i engage with it so i'm not and then everything over the over the pandemic changed and tiktok tiktok's rise came from the fact that that platform is ridiculously authentic people gravitated towards it like moth to a flame and it's still going now so to give you some perspective on tiktok is it 1.2 billion users average now instagram's 1.7 so it's solidly at t number three yeah. it's past twitter it's past linkedin it's past pinterest mm. if you're not taking it seriously now I might be in a bit of a pickle. Um, so <laughs> I presumably Facebook still leads that. It but does. It's but not who's where using it in the way it's meant to be. People are on there, but yeah. heart's not in Facebook. I don't see anymore. No, I. Uh, for me, it's it's a platform that's it's it's in its last phase. Should yeah. we say? There's a reason they're investing in the metaverse and not investing back in Facebook. There's a reason they haven't come out with an original feature in the last five years and just copied others. They don't care. Their mm -hmm. next investment is the metaverse. Yeah. So even the company itself knows it's on its last legs. But, you know, it, it is, I just don't like Facebook too much in particular because if you wanted to start a business today and you had no budget, a Facebook page is the worst thing to set up. <laughs> you will not get anywhere. Yeah. So to put, give us some perspective. We have around 715 followers on our LinkedIn. We have around 400 and something followers on our Instagram. And we've posted the same content to those two platforms as we have Facebook. Facebook is on the same 63 people I invited from my friends list when I first started a year and seven months ago. <laughs> this is a joke. Yeah. And I'm not paying them a penny because yeah. they can get stuffed. Yeah. <laughs> not a chance. Um, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. No, absolutely don't blame you. And I think that stuff needs to be said. I'm yeah. just, let's go back to, so that's incredibly quickly how yeah. You, yeah. it's obviously validated what you're doing, that there is a demand for it. Mm. We were talking before the show about how few dedicated social media agencies mm. are around that's crazy given mm. i mean you'll you'll probably agree with this i think for business owners the disproportionate headspace mm. that social media takes mm -hmm. it's probably people won't like to admit this but in terms of how long people spend thinking about it learning how to improve it mm -hmm. i would say social media is the biggest small business priority yeah yet you said there's barely any agencies dedicated to it. Why is that? Uh, it's hard to justify the return on investment from organic content. Okay. It's taken us until, I say, a year and three months in to get solid organic leads coming through to even my personal profile, the company profile, yeah. after putting out so much original content and shared content having a full strategy behind it. Mm. Now, you say that to any company that obviously doesn't even have our knowledge yet. So that's how we, that's accelerated, in my opinion, for how, mm. how quickly that could have gone. It's not that like we've gone viral at any point. It's all just kind of particular good pieces that have done well. Um, so you look at a business and go, yeah, for the next one to two years, you're going to have to post without expecting anything back and invest X amount of money in it. Ready? And they go, ah. um, So it, it's just, it's a necessary evil, but we overthink it a lot. And this is why our whole business ethos is you need to post like a creator. Because mm. it's not like they have crazy budgets to do anything. They're doing it all the free way. And, you know, when you can get hundreds of thousands of, of views and, you know, people really giving you business feedback, and especially if you're building a, a tech business, that consumer feedback to put into your platform it, that's invaluable. People pay hundreds for survey companies to find out this information when you could get it via your own comments if you just put the legwork in. Uh, and it is the legwork. We just now finally have to accept we cannot buy ourselves an audience anymore. We have to earn it. Mm. And we, we all know it deep down in here somewhere, but there's just there tends to be a lot of personal psychology that comes into the world of social media because it's hard to justify 
I don't want to put myself out there. There's lots of different things that go into it and it becomes a personal thing. So people will procrastinate over it. And I completely understand it takes a while to push through that. But once you get there, you're in a very good place. It's a flip, isn't it? I'm I'm going to steer you away from that purely because that is our topic of only talks, things like a content <laughs> creator. So yes. um, if you're watching this and you want to get that information, that's part of mm. um, uh, an only membership benefit. But yeah. um, let's t- there's still loads more that we can cover in mm. terms of... so. Tell us about this because you've grown very quickly. Yes. How big is your agency and what's the pro, what's the plan for the future? So there's four of us now, but we're hiring for three more. Um, so, and yeah, that's been in, in the year, year and seven months. So that's been kind of wild, but it, it's good. It's just, it, it's a, we need talented people on seats. That That's that's the main thing. So I'm very particular on who we hire and the people we work with as well. Yeah. We're not the type of agency that goes, if you want to outsource your socials to us, we'll take it. Absolutely not. The door's there. You need to be heavily involved in the process because it needs to feel like an agency hasn't touched your content. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, it, it has to be, it has to come from you. You have to really care about it because it reflects directly in your brand. It's very interesting. And it's been working with the likes, you know, Barclays, Barclays Eagle Labs, um, South City Council and the 2025 Bid for Culture team uh, because they've all been struggling with this human connection piece. And it's, for us, our specialty has become helping people and the company specifically find their voice and their uniqueness in amongst mm. the organic content and helping them realize the strategy they need. And just doing that simply, we've added pieces and from you know, me just being in my bedroom on Fiverr, getting a few clients, uh, and then just starting it to, to this. So it's pretty wild how, how quickly it's grown. But Where think, are you going to get to? Where are we going to get to? Um, so I'm minimum kind of 10 staff by end of year, I think, wow. um, just from where I'm, where I'm thinking of, of being. Um, and you know, we look to secure at least another four or five clients in the next three to four months i'd say so but then it's about fulfilling that quality make sure we really build those long-term relationships going forward and just make some cracking content i'm really on the lookout for people who are extremely talented who have a good eye for it and specifically a good eye for tiktok because it's such a new Mm -hmm. thing that if you come from a traditional marketing background you're not gonna have the skill sets even if you're if if your boss says makes a few tiktoks it's actually more looking at working with people who have more of a creator mindset instead of a marketing mindset. That's kind of my job to talk both languages and bring what is the corporate world into the creator world. And so you can benefit from both and have a team that thinks like creators first. So congratulations. I mean, Thank that's you. incredible, Huge isn't it? To get yeah. to get to that level that quickly. So Thank you. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, let's talk about, oh, here's, here's a question. Authentic social media. Mm. I think this is one of those really misunderstood talk things. Because people word, say yeah. authentic, they actually mean oh i'm gonna do what i think people want to see which is actually the opposite of authentic Mm. what does it mean to you on social media (laughs) it's tricky because it almost doesn't matter what it means to me it matters what it means to each and every individual okay so you know the way i tackle it is i show my day-to-day workings as transparently as possible so sharing behind the scenes of, of my meetings to get the good bits so people can get a value out of it as well the same as the person or the client i was i was, I was talking to that can really help individual updates on what's happening in social media uh, bear in mind this is all just me talking to camera so again that's the authenticity piece there um, me sharing everything both ups and downs that can really help uh depending on if the downs aren't, aren't too bad uh but you know <laughs> it's it's just not over thinking it too much the way we tend to to strategize is just go right your monday to friday each day is a content pocket that's what you're going to post in each day but instead of thinking i'll do a you know throwback thursday but it's just eh. um what you want to do is just put an original series in each one so each one is a monday that is a personal reflection on me so start the week what am i looking forward to Mm. tuesday that is a a more of an informational part so here's how you do x on linkedin wednesday you know and just plotting in things like this podcast clips and all the rest so now you have this series the same way a youtuber would have a try not to laugh they'd have a reaction video they'd have stuff like this and they get that reliably and their audience expects and likes that so you have to think about it completely differently and the way I, I tend to help people do it is if your business was an individual creator a youtuber twitch streamer tiktoker how would they how would they do it what would they post what would they yeah. make and as soon as you start thinking like that you go oh there's so many different ideas now and you have to take off the invisible veil of professionalism that all businesses think mm-hmm. exists because any business that steps out of that has true success so just mm. do what is you you've kind of said about this but how do you feel about um, sharing vulnerabilities on social media because that comes up quite a lot doesn't yeah. it? people either love that or hate that how do you feel about that depends on who you are as a person yeah. if I'm honest I can give a monkey's what people do uh, it's just whatever benefits them so for me when I show vulnerability it's be in a podcast like you know when I had this issue I've done X, Y, and Z, and I've asked my guests, you know, what do you think? Mm. That's just me 
bringing bring it down to a human level and go yeah even though it, everything looks very successful from the outside i still have questions to ask i still have a ways to go it's subtle vulnerability it's not yeah guys if i don't get two sales quick i'm not going to be here <laughs> uh it's it's just going to be you know oh here's a question i had because i had no idea personally and i think especially in the agency world there's always been this we have to be completely perfect and know everything at all times so we instill trust in our clients i think if anything now that is a one it leads to a frosty reception because you feel like you're talking to some perfect company mm. and, and two it's like how do i talk to this i can't there's no there's no cracks in the armor i can't yeah. relate to you and it's yeah. the same way you relate to characters that act well on screen or creators that make great content but then every now and again they show a human moment mm. that's how it should be executed not you know just every time you have an issue going ah, i need help even though you can also help on linkedin obviously and dms and all the rest of it but yeah it's it's more about showing your humanity rather than anything else that's a good way of looking yeah, at brilliant. it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. excellent talk to us about networking mm -hmm. i'm always particularly fascinated by a younger generation yeah how what networking looks like to you what does it mean well our business was a pandemic baby so i my networking experience is only well i have physical ones as well but it started as purely online so for me, I was trying to treat them like I would have treated my individual sales calls. And I went into it with the mindset of this being a diagnostic for whoever I'm talking to instead of anything else. So this is why I immediately let out the gate. Well, I'm going to get nowhere by just hard selling to people. Yeah. So I went, okay, let me listen for keywords. Let me, like we talked about active listening, let me go in and think, I'm just going to help this person. I'm not even going to think about myself at all. Mm. Because once you give all that value up front and go, listen, I've heard you had this problem. I hear you when you say this. I mean, they feel heard, first of all, and start there. And you go, you know, when I look at your page, I see X, Y, and Z. Obviously, this is easier for me because obviously I'm a service based. This is what I do every day. Um, and then afterwards, they're like, oh, my God, I have a whole page of notes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Tell me about you. And then they're really eager to get into the stuff that you have. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, actually, it seems like a kind of a perfect fit. And it just rolls in into you nicely. And this is why I say record some of your behind the scenes meetings, things like that, because as long as you're not saying anything specific, if you get some content out of your networking, it is not a waste of time to be given this information for free. Mm. Now I always get a golden nugget out of each thing, so I'm getting it. It's a win-win. Mm -hmm. I make a good connection and I get something for myself to post out to show of how human I am and how much I want to help people. Yeah. So I would do it as a double-edged sword, but always going as a bit of a business diagnostic. It tends to work for me all the time. That's a great That's way great. of looking at it. Yeah. Mm. So... Because Stephen Bartlett said recently, don't network. What a man, yeah. And his, I have a bit of an issue with it because he said don't network, but he didn't say in brackets, network differently. Because <laughs> he said, I don't see the point in walking around the room handing out business cards. So what he's saying is that traditional yeah, way, old, old school, weekly yeah. networking, um, but what you do to actually network is build a brand online, mm. interact online which is where we sit. We, I'd still call that networking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So ha, does that resonate with you? Are you in that space? That's why I, I digitally extend my networking by capturing those moments and putting out information that I would have told in networking anyway, um, because then it can work harder and longer for you. So the life cycle on a piece of content on LinkedIn is like two weeks. I still get likes on stuff that I posted well, quite a while ago. So when you think about it in that way, instead of one hour and a half session, you can make something in that session last longer. So then you find your best bits. I will say there's always a place for networking. He, Bartlett has a very unique journey mm. of he built creator focused pages and leveraged them to bring brands into the world of existing trust and uh, and kind of like almost brand wealth in the way that they got that reach, right? That is a very unique way to start a social business. So he wouldn't have had to do the networking that a lot of us have to do in different industries. Yeah. So I understand he will never see the perspective of other industries in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, try and digitally extend it, because that's his point. He was like, you can network by just putting yourself on video. Yes. It has the same effect. Yeah. Whereas you might as well do both, because some actually bring some immediate return especially when a business is in its younger stages. Because he has such a unique journey, he was never there. So I understand why he has that perspective. Yeah. But it does need to be tweaked for a wider audience. But he's right, isn't he? And I mean, he famously does still interact with his audience on social media by replying to comments and actually getting into dialogue. Mm. He does have a whole team that does it now. Yeah. But for me, that's networking. Yeah. That, I would call yeah. that networking. You're just doing it in a smarter mm. way. Aren't you? Yeah, and I think a, a lot of people miss out on their content. And if it's you guys at home, whenever you have finish out your content, put you know what do you think 
Mm. Comment below. Let me know. Stuff the classic stuff we see YouTubers do. Include it in your in your way of doing things because mm. you open up the floor to comment. Because otherwise, you may get a bunch of likes on stuff. You see it quite a lot. Things will get a bunch of likes and a bunch of reach, but no comments. And you're mm. like, why? The community does not feel welcome to include on this. Maybe because you do have such a perfect persona, or maybe because until that point, you never asked before. A call to action is obviously as effective as we know. It's like you ask, you get often. So mm. ask them to comment. Obviously, this is where the only network can help because, you know, start off by adding those comments into. It's almost like when you're the first one to turn up to a party. You never want to be the first one to comment. <laughs> but if there's existing comments out there, it really helps. So, yeah, just ask your community to comment on stuff, even if it's a written post, if it's a graphic post, if it's you just saying, listen, I need your opinion, just let me know down below. That can change the game for how you then get interacted with online because more interaction down there is an extension of that networking you would have done online. I like that. And I do think there's a bit of bravery needed there, isn't there? Because some people there don't is. actually want to hear the answers. They kind of want to output it, but don't necessarily want to engage it in that is conversation. Part, it is part and parcel of social, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're not doing something right unless someone's hating on you. Exactly. Um, and the the phrase, especially when I, because obviously I get nervous about it as well sometimes, uh, because I my LinkedIn previously, before I started pushing out all this, was like everyone I work with in my professional marketing career who all were way more experienced than me so me starting this business out of the blue it was like oh what are they gonna think because mm. I was always their junior so it was gonna be very strange but I had to just go I must do what others aren't willing to to succeed yeah uh, and you have to give yourself the old YouTube motivational speech yeah. uh, because then if you you know if especially if you're in a competitive field if you are the one that steps out and creates a podcast if you are the one that doubles down on TikTok you are now the one in that space and it will pay off for you but you have to realise that it does take a long time. It will not be a couple of videos. Yeah, it's not a cheat, is it? Someone said to me the other day, do you reply to all of your comments on your post on mm. LinkedIn? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't that take a long time? Yeah, mm. it really does. But that's why you see my content actually does something mm -hmm. and I get into conversations with people, which leads to people coming to my network. Yes. If, if you're not willing to... Because we've literally heard people say, oh, but I've posted what I've got... A, then do more. Mm. Well, that's the whole point. It's the more that's yeah. going to give you yeah, some value, in. isn't yeah. it? So but it's using that content pocket strategy we talked about earlier to help you get ahead on stuff so you're not running the social hamster wheel. Mm. That can yeah. be the hardest part about social and we'll, we'll suppose we'll talk about a little bit more later, but you have to get ahead as much as you can. Try and work two weeks to a month ahead on the stuff that is evergreen. It doesn't have a particular date. We're not talking about something that's relevant. So anything you add on top, any updates, any comments is nice to have their cherries on the cake. So and it, it just helps your workflow because otherwise you just drown in the amount you could do yeah. because every single business listening to this will have infinite potential to go balls to the wall crazy on any idea they want that could really change the, how they operate and how people see their brand but the time it takes to do that it can be a time sink so you must implement a workflow to assist on you beginning this journey to cultivate a community it's mm, good so only as an online network mm. presumably you're really comfortable with that it doesn't really need an explanation so the, the scale of what we're doing, so London, Manchester, mm. things like that, does that just make sense to you, New yeah. York? Absolutely. Obviously, being a pandemic business, I have a bit of a unique perspective on the fact that it, the the good thing about it is, even though it was horrible, is the fact that it has opened up the world. Mm. Mm. And even though it opens up the world, just like with infinite scope on social, that's infinite scope to go to any region at any time to target any particular niche. And it's like, oh my God, where do I start? Yeah. And sometimes it can just be best to start in like in places like only because at least I I know even little colloquialism and how people talk from different areas, how mm. how they interact with people, what's the energy like? Because you can help you figure out how you're going to talk to your next person from the area. And obviously, you wouldn't have got exposure to those people without being part of those networks yeah. and get those learnings. Um, it, it's invaluable to have a place where you can start there and almost infiltrate different areas if you want to. Be known yeah. as many places as you can. I'd highly recommend it for a business that doesn't have any regional lock. Mm. It's it's incredible. Mm. Local, the, the local thing we found, it is still important because people mm. like the option of saying, what if I do want to go and have a coffee? Yeah. Well, then it's it makes not, sense to yeah. be in the local location, but then like you say, you can go and wander mm. when you're confident. It's a common Common, um, bit of commonality, thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, does make sense. Final question, and the one that I'm most interested in, of course. <laughs> Basket <laughs> NBA basketball Mount Rushmore. So, what are the four faces on Mount Rushmore of NBA? By the way, relevant to probably less than one percent of our audience. <laughs> really, I don't care. It's our show. Okay. All right. This is an impossible question, and here come the hate comments. Right. <laughs> We're going to clip this, and we'll see what what we get. Michael Jordan. 
definitely, obviously, considered the greatest of all time. LeBron James, an absolute genetic freak, still playing. I don't know how. He must be about 100 right now. Um, <laughs> this one might annoy people. Steph Curry. Yeah. I, I cannot ignore how... He's changed the game. He has changed the game of NBA completely, and there's not many players that have done that. And for personal reasons, Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Th those are my... It's more how they make me feel players rush more instead of their actual playing performance. Obviously, Michael's always going to be up there. Yeah. But yeah, especially Kobe, obviously, it's just one of my life's biggest inspirations, I think. Uh, I, I do need to actually get his book, The Mumba Mentality. It's one that's been on my list forever that I have not, have not got yet. But yeah, just his, his work ethic is something that is just impossible to many other people. Um, and yeah, he's an inspiration every day. And I keep him at the end of each and every one of my sales decks. He's in a picture of it. So yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I always cool. say about Kobe, don't I? When I'm, getting, when I'm a bit down and I think, what would Kobe what do? What would the Mamba do? Yeah. yeah. Like that whole thing about the ice baths. And he, he talks about falling in love with the process. Mm. So even the worst bits, that's part of your journey. Yep. And when you learn to embrace that, that makes you... Yeah. Because he wasn't the most talented out of the box. No. But he, no one worked harder than him, and that's yeah. inspiring, isn't it? Yeah. What's your... So who's your four? Well, very similar. Yeah. I, I couldn't have Kobe on there because there's just four others, that, but he's fifth. Um, so it is Michael because mm. that's who I grew up watching. But then I also grew up in the bird and magic era. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And... They were just geniuses, yeah. the pair of them. And then LeBron. Those who say the NBA, people forget. Um, yeah, sorry. But I'm older, so I'm mm. always going to have a slightly different... But I don't disagree with what you're saying. And Steph Curry, mm. I'm not his biggest fan, but wow. Yeah, yeah. His, his effects are undeniable on yeah. the game. You've got centres now shooting threes because of him. <laughs> Honest thing, I never thought I'd see the day, but there you go. Yeah. We'll have to end it there. Yeah, we have to. That's a good selection. Mate. You're not asking me mine. What's yours? Uh, JJ Riddick. JJ Reddick because she fancies facial. him. Eternal six facial. Man. Yeah. I don't know if he's any good at basketball, but he's quite nice to watch. Shaq. Hilarious. Shaq's hilarious. Shaq's, yeah, yeah. Hilarious. He would be in the top ten. Was, he oh, just, yeah, definitely. I mean, another one that changed the game. Yeah. James Harden, purely because he's mm. the only one who I always remember his name. Mm. Yeah. And beard. I recognise his beard. I just can't think of anyone else. Fair enough. Not a bad it's knowledge, right, it? Mm. Okay. is it? To be fair, we don't agree with any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Quite impressed myself. I saw <laughs> Shaq play live in the first time they ever played an NBA game outside of the States, London. Atlanta Hawks, Dominic Wilkins. <laughs> Penny's first season with Shaq, saw him live. Oh. Beat that. Uh, yeah, She's been to more NBA games than you have. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't been to a single one. I've even seen, what's his name? Oh, this is a different sport. I know, but... Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Wow, you've seen the greatest of all time. Yeah. Fair play. Yeah. All right. Not that it meant anything to me, but there you go. Anyway, on that note. Let's wrap up. <laughs> it's the best bit, isn't it? Thank you for watching and listening and sticking with us. This has been the Only Networking Show. We'll see you again next time.